everyone and thank you for joining for this interesting topic uh, to discuss and listen a bit. I would like to give some overview why I'm talking about this unusual topic for like in context of Golang. First of all, because I've been working on my pet project for more than one year that is related to uh, embedded devices and hardware and uh, the user space applications written in Golang and uh, the actual product is a router and we are trying to like interact with kernel to configure everything what we need from our uh, like control application and today is a topic regarding how and uh, why <laughs> do you need uh, interact with linux kernel probably i will start sharing the screen okay uh, artur could you uh, please confirm that uh, that you can see my screen. I confirm. Cool. Uh, okay. Agenda for today. No, uh, this is agenda before this weekend, uh, and it's pretty like a uh, pretty usual when we have a live demo in the end. It's five item in the agenda, but during the weekend I realized that probably it makes sense to show you guys what exactly it does. Uh, on the real example and after that explain how it works, because it will be easier to understand who a uh, person for, for people who are not familiar with uh, the netlink in Golang or netlink at all. This is agenda for today and live demo it will be second item. Okay. Uh, First of all, we need to understand why we want or why we need to interact with the Linux kernel from the user space application or processes. Uh, for, from my vision and my perspective, uh, if you want to configure something like network interfaces. Uh, and uh, in this case, you can like add interface uh, and interfaces, modify them, configure IP addresses for them. Uh, definitely when you change the network interface, you have to, or you want to change the routing tables because you have a new interface or you change the subnet, uh, or even you want to configure a firewall in your Linux host. Uh, another use case to interact with kernel, it's, uh, I mean, from user space applications, when you have some kernel modules, which expose a possibility to uh, interact with user space applications directly, uh, or I don't know, you, you want to gather some statistics like uh, from one uh, user space application, collect the statistics about another process uh, with high precision, for example, high precision, precision CPU, RAM, uh, other metrics, or uh, interface stats get the received transmitted packets or by bytes how many errors you had or have um, and this is one one example and last but not least it's interacting with peripheral devices uh, connecting somehow to your cpu i mean to into your device it could be like wireless uh, adapters or as an ad switches and many many more and uh, to give you more uh, like a uh, more context i would like to show you a quick demo right now <clears throat> give me please a second i have to switch my camera um. Uh, this is an actual device. I, I think you can see uh, instead of my video, uh, you can see my device. It's on the table right now. And what I would like to show you, it's uh, like a few binary applications I prepare it for, um, for this demo. And first one, it uh, demonstrates, it demonstrates, uh, excuse me, I have to connect to the device first. And now the first demo application shows you how to interact with links. 
it's completely written in Golang. And as you can see, uh, we have a bunch of interfaces uh, in this router and we can grab any stats, MAC addresses, state of the port. Uh, and for this example, I will disconnect the one cable. And as you can see, state changes immediately. You can get back the cable and the state is going up. Why we actually need this? First of all, uh, because we can um, react almost uh, in the real time on the events like that. And for example, bring up the DHCP server or DNS server for this specific uh, interface. Uh, the second example, um, it's uh, regarding the wireless. This is um, two, two tables. One of them represents five gigahertz uh, network. Second one, it's uh, 2.4. And right now I'm connecting from my phone to, um, one second, it's scanning to five gigahertz. Uh, network, as you can see, it's my uh, phone, and we can get um, like in real time the information about this connection. Uh, the similar to 2.4, we can get the information. Uh, yeah, this is a quick demo, but we will uh, back uh, soon to another uh, to another example. Uh, let me change camera back. Yeah. Um, Artur, can you please assist me? Uh, can you still see my presentation? I need to. Complain. Yes, we can. Cool. Uh, let's move forward. Uh, we need to understand uh, what ways of interaction with kernel we have, or, or at least I know it's four of them. First of all, it's most simple the most simple i guess just wrap the existing executable binary tools from your linux distribution into your like a, your pro uh, user space application it could be anything it's not about the golang it could be anything you can just wrap but you have to deal with standard in input standard output parse the uh, commands and it's not so convenient way to do that uh, Second, uh, second way to interact is a system calls, and one of them is IOCTL, and you can call it to interact with devices. And all binary previous binary tools, I mean older from the uh, older distributions in Linux, use the IOCTL, but for now it's legacy. Uh, definitely, you can use the special purpose file system such as dev, uh, DevFS, CFS, ProSFS. The problem is the similar to the first item you have to deal with parsing uh, input output it's harder to uh, send some binary data uh, but it's possible and fourth and i guess the best way to interact with kernel and kernel modules it's netlink and it's our target for today uh, our topic uh, first of all, what, what Netlink is, it's uh, uh, just a simple IPC. It's an inter-process communication uh, mechanism that gives you a possibility uh, or just your user space applications uh, to interact with kernel uh, using just a simple socket. A few words about the Netlink socket because it's a bit different from the usual network socket. It's available only on your local machine, which means on the only a local host and never exposes outside. Uh, from the like interaction with the socket itself, it supports Berkeley Sockets API. That's a just classical one when you can do bind, listen, accept, connect. Uh, the Netlink, like con the Netlink itself can uh, consist of structured families. Uh, it's like functionally grouped things uh, and you can interact with them uh, we will see it in a few minutes. It's uh, flexible and extendable. That's awesome pro uh, protocol. And uh, I believe, from my understanding, it's uh, the most convenient way to do the interaction. 
Uh, another feature uh, in Netlink, it's multicast groups, which gives you a possibility to subscribe on some events in your system using a bitmask. And uh, we will see also in a few minutes. Uh, and that there is uh, the kernel module, uh, I believe in new distributions and new kernel versions should be there, uh, but uh, you can like build yourself uh, kernel module for monitoring. It creates a virtual interface, virtual network interface in your system. You just connect by TCP dump and can do like a dumping to file and use in Wireshark to see what exactly happening on your Netlink uh, bus. A few words regarding network families. Um, on top of the Netlink layer, it's uh, we have uh, the families such as NetFilter, when you can configure your firewall, crypto to configure crypto uh, engine in kernel, a route family for uh, doing like uh, configuring routing tables, IP addresses, interfacing, bringing up and down, uh, and many, many more. IPsec, WireGuard, uh, any tunneling uh, protocols you can configure using NetLink. Uh, but there is uh, one a specific uh, family which called generic. It gives uh, a possibility to extend the existing top uh, level of the families. Uh, and it's more like a dynamic way uh, to um, like expose your net link, for example, from some kernel module, and it's dynamically loaded. Uh, and in this generic subfamily, in the, the, sorry, in this generic family, we have a bunch of subfamilies such as task stats uh, to get this what I mentioned high precision CPU memory of other processes. Um, for example, Ethernet tools to managing switches, hardware switches. Uh, NL uh, eight oh two eleven it's for managing Wi-Fi. What we just saw in the demo, and uh, ACPI for power management. All, all the things you can use directly from your user space application. Uh, there is another, uh, like a specific um, family which called NLCTL, uh, sorry, NLCTRL. It's uh, from Netlink Control. Uh, as I mentioned, the generic Netlink uh, is dynamic. And from uh, reboot, or after reboot of your host, uh, the IDs or order of the generic families could be changed. And this NL uh, control family gives you a possibility. It has a static ID and you uh, all the time you can get the latest um, like a state of your net link in your kernel. Um, okay, let's move on. A uh, few words regarding this uh, messages format because it's a bit different if compared to network uh, messages using the sockets. First of all, we have a, a host by its ordering, which means it depends on your uh, CPU architecture. Um, also, the order of the fields in the header and instead of usual like a regular um, type lens and value order, we have here like a lens type value. Uh, payload goes up to the header, logically. Uh, one thing you need to keep in mind that uh, all like messages should be padded to four bytes. If you have 31 byte message size, you have to um, you have to pad it to 32 and or just to four, four bytes next. Uh, keep in mind that where um, the messages in the net link could be really uh, like a small or uh, really huge. In this case, you have to deal with dynamic memory allocation for their uh, message buffers. And if you like get the large messages, you have to increase it or decrease if you if necessary. But on practice, um, I don't I didn't see the messages uh, like in in standard. I believe it could be up to four gigabytes, uh, but I don't believe it's possible. <laughs> um, also messages could be a uh, multi-part and libraries, what we will see later cares about it. Uh, errors are like classical Linux um, sockets uh, and nothing special. 
Um, but why I'm talking about this part, uh, as you can see, you can deal with Netlink directly creating some packets, uh, um, like making the headers, uh, passing some payload, combining all together and create the packets, but it's a pain. And uh, yeah, and later we, we will see uh, what options we have to uh, deal with the packets. Um, like uh, instead of manually, we can use libraries, definitely. A few words regarding this uh, generic subfamily, subfamilies. Uh, this generic Netlink uh, subfamilies extends existing Netlink. It's like wraps. Um, generic Netlink messages wrap it into the uh, like a regular Netlink messages uh, in the payload. Uh, four byte size, header, payload goes up the header the same. Uh, and as I mentioned, a special family and now uh, control just to get in control of your generic Netlink families. Summary, safe. I guess it's the most safest way to interact with kernel. Uh, yeah, it's easy to use because uh, for example, um, you, you, you can deal directly with just a socket you can manage packets by yourself or use the libraries. It's, uh, you have options for that. Uh, possibility to listen events. It's a huge advantage because uh, the like outside from your system, I mean, uh, like events from the real world when you have the disconnect of cable or uh, connecting new um, network device NIC. Um, you can deal with this uh, directly and understand that something is happening. Uh, a great advantage regarding the Netlink, it does not require at all uh, permissions, root priv privileges, sorry, um, for read-only operations. Um, need to keep in mind, bytes ordering a padding, uh, hard to maintain the raw messages. And there is a solutions, actually two solutions. First one, we have two libraries. It's the most popular two libraries. First one, it's uh, by Wish Abrams from Heroku, and it's the most popular and has the large community. The, uh, it's really, really easy to use. It's just, uh, you, you, you don't even need to connect to socket or do some uh, like uh, packet management or anything else, you just, uh, pr provide the parameters and it does its job. Um, yeah, the one disadvantage, the disadvantage, it has the limited or like a, at this time uh, implemented for some bunch of families. And if you need to extend, it will be hard because you have to, I guess, fork the library, add the families. And uh, from my personal uh, perspective, it has like a C, C like Go API. Uh, and yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> the second library, it was created by Matt Lawyer from uh, DigitalOcean. It's not so popular, but it's definitely uh, the most powerful foundation um, library to build um, something on top of this library. It's low level library. Uh, and it's it has super simple and clear Go API. You don't have to even uh, go to the sources to understand what's happening. Um, and there, there are a lot of building blocks already implemented or you can implement uh, on top of this library. Uh, for example, as I mentioned, a generic Netlink uh, library, similar from Matt. Uh, JS Monetti, it's for, um, it's, um, for routing interfaces and addresses, it uh, built on top of the Netlink library. Uh, the NF tables um, library to manage uh, like a P table successor, NF tables called, and it's created by Google. Uh, similar, Matt created DevLink for Ethernet and Finiband management. Um, also, Ethernet tools, also the Matt's. Uh, implementation, WireGuard for management, uh, WireGuard VPNs, and many, many more. If you will take a look on Go Docs, you will see the more than 130 uh, at this time importers. And that's something, it, uh, it means that uh, library is really cool and easy to extend. Few words regarding the code base. 
I mean, we can take a look at some sources. Uh, Artur, I need your assistance again. Uh, is it okay? I mean, uh, font size? Um, I, I suppose, yes. Okay, thank you. Anyway, uh, the presentation will be available and you will ca you can ch check the code base later uh, or go to the GitHub uh, or the link is there in the end. Uh, for example, this uh, this is this very small uh, like example. We we want to set interface address and bring it up. And this is example uh, uses the uh, Vishwananda netlink. It's first library, what I mentioned, easy to use. As you can see, we just uh, get the uh, link by name, uh, pass this link, the first arg argument, and the second argument, it's actually our address, which con uh, contains the IP net. Super simple, and uh, yeah, and the second method is just a link set up, and your interface definitely will be bring it up with the new address. Uh, yeah, and one more one notice here. Uh, we are like brave and don't check the errors here. Just for um, like a, um, saving the space on the slides. This is the similar example uh, setting up the uh, sorry setting the interface address and in bring it up, but uh, the using the mass library uh, and also just Monetti RT link RT, uh, RT net link library. And as you can see, we have a lot of uh, different fields here and we should like set them to do the similar thing. Uh, we have like a disadvantage, you have to deal with a lot of different fields. Uh, in other, on, other, on, other, on the other hand, uh, you can specify some like low level things for your interface. You can go like a, a, a lower, layer and interact with uh, netlink on the lower layer uh, that gives you a possibility to build more flexible things if you are ready to deal with more boilerplate code um, yeah another cool feature what i mentioned it uh, that you can subscribe on events it's also super super simple you just provide the uh, what what type of the netlink family you want to use here we have netlink route and the second call is join group it's it means uh, we join to the group uh, which gives you updates on events on your interfaces and that's it in for the loop you just receive the messages until you get the end of file which means we close it like uh, gracefully uh or just from outside we close it this socket uh, on error we just um, um just exceed the problem as a program and uh, and the last part it's second for loop we iterate over the messages and trying to unmarshal them to the specific uh link message uh, uh, to the specific sorry to the specific message uh, and in this case we have a link message uh, there is could be a lot of them and uh, that you have to deal with this um, trying to unmarshal different uh, messages because we use uh, in the join group on top of this example we use a bit mask and that's it you just uh, do anything with your data i mean you get the uh, like link message you have attributes inside you have a name of the interface and the operational state um, all these examples will be uh, on the GitHub. This and same from the demo. Demo is uh, demo examples are more uh, like interesting, uh, and you can check how it works. I guess that's it. Um, yeah, one thing I would like to mention before Q and A session. Um, uh, the first link, it's the, actually this GitHub uh, where uh, the demo code and snippets uh, from this presentation are stored, you can check. And the second link, it's a great talk, uh, but, but Matt Lawyer regarding the net link. It's a super quick talk uh, for, I guess, seven minutes where he explained why he created the, this library. 
and I really, really recommend you guys to watch. Um, I believe that's that's all from my side. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me, and I will try to answer. Yuri, we have one question in our chat. Uh, should I read or you can read? Yeah, I can open. EBPF, uh, first question. It's a great question because uh, I had an I had the idea to talk about EBPF, but uh, Ivan uh, gave me like a good advice to probably in next uh, our Go community uh, gatherings, uh, we can talk about EBPF like a series of the uh, like a presentations regarding how to interact with kernel. And I definitely agree that EBPF is another uh, topic, but it's so large and I would like to discuss it uh, like in separate session. Um, yeah, guys, and if you want to join the discussion, we can have like a couple presenters that will be presented like different piece of this uh, huge chunk. Yes, so if you're interested in this topic, so we can join Yuri and discuss how we can present this topic. Sure. Um, what are the benefits of using resource expensive Go to build embedded software over the most efficient standard tool without uh, running at all, a row C. Uh, it's a great question. Uh, it's uh, how to say it, it's hard to find someone with uh, skills to write in C high level applications. Uh, actually, the embedded it's uh, like wide range of the devices. It's not about only microcontrollers uh, or uh, just about like uh, automobile, uh, automotive uh, cockpits. I don't know, anything could be uh, called embedded. But in our case, uh, our device is uh, like have the great uh, CPU and the RAM uh, performance. And uh, why Golang? Because we deal with gRPC for configuring uh, kernel. And gRPC, it's for communicating between servers and the, the, the actual appliance devices. Uh, that's why we choose the Golang. It's uh, statically compiled. Uh, you don't, in our case, uh, we don't have to deal with uh, C at all. I mean, we, we don't need C Go to interact with kernel or configure anything. I don't know, is it answer or not? I understand that C, it's, it's okay, but, but we have to deal a lot of uh, with like a low level uh, languages, probably C++ it's another, uh, could be another option, but the problem of C++, I don't know C++. <laughs> we can switch, but it, we, we will waste the time. Not sure, Mihailo, uh, am I answered? Did I answer their question or? Okay. What is the best library for that link to try it by yourself? Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, there are two libraries. Um, it's thing, if, if it's if it's related to Golang, uh, there there are two libraries. Uh, Vishwananda, it's author, and the second one it's uh, by Matt Lawyer. Uh, I would tell you can definitely you can start from the uh, Vishwananda's library uh, because it's easy to use, and what that's exactly the same path I did. I mean, uh, I. First of all, I went using the Vishwananda's uh, library and uh, it, it works, definitely it works. But the problem is when we started dealing with Wi-Fi and uh, NL AO211, definitely we have to use something else. That's why we switch it completely to uh, Matt, uh, Matt's Netlink library and all like a building uh, build build it on top of this library, other libraries. Uh, network, uh, Netlink can potentially be used in IPC scenarios. Would you recommend uh, Netlink for IPC or use it only for process kind of communication? Mm, I think so. It could be used because it's like a bus inside of the kernel, uh, but I've never tried it. I mean, uh, communicate 
between two user space processes, but I believe it, it's possible. Uh, is Netlink uh, Linux only specific? I think so. Uh, first of all, because I didn't saw any implementations for, for example, for other operating systems. Uh, at first glance, I also th uh, thought it, it could be like a POSIX systems, but I've never tried on some open BSD or free BSD on Mac OS. Mm, and I don't think it worked. I, I can tell you, honestly, I don't know exactly, but I saw only Linux. You said that you are uh, doing this project for two years. Why so long time? Is there a lot of work or other reason? Um, a lack of lack of engineers. Uh, it's much more like a 